I was left to my own devices for the remainder of the evening after my host, Mart, ran out. The house staff retrieved the remains of dinner in short order and, despite asking, was unable to garner any information about Mart. With little else to do, I messed around with the little floating shard for a bit. I should clarify something. Most of the aspects of the magic or runic carvings were logic circuits, but not all of them. For example, there is no way you can wrap wires that will result in shooting a pulse of energy out of one end. You can up the voltage and get some lightning, but there's no way to fire a contained ball of electricity. So, while the carvings around the emitter were just like you would find in a computer, the emitter was something else entirely. It still fit with the rest of the carvings, but simply wasn't what appeared in electrical systems. But capacitors, resistors, logic gates, and switches were all virtually identical, allowing for some differences in how this odd energy worked. After I had a simple command system rigged up in my implants from which I could quickly and easily control the shard, I ran out of things to do on that front. That led me back to what I had been doing when I had been found, speaking with the Harmony. I didn't want to set up the full spell again, so I simply booted up a simulation of a human mind and allowed the entity to inhabit it. Back in a false mind, were its first words, the transition is an odd sensation. I don't feel anything when I pull my personality into the implant, I replied, which I had to do to escape when you took control of my body. Your emotions are based on crude chemical interactions, the entity explained. Thus, within a false mind that lacks these, you feel nothing. My emotions are more sophisticated. You have emotions? Of course I am a higher entity, but I am created from minds like yours. Just a higher doesn't seem to include being humble, does it? I stated flatly. It was not a boast, merely a fact. You are a consciousness created from an amalgamation of non-conscious elements. I am a consciousness created from other consciousnesses, another order higher. Doesn't mean you're better than us humans. Of course not, but neither am I inferior. There are advantages and disadvantages to being a higher order being. Right, well, about the agreement we made. It stands, though I imagine there will be some difficulty in removing my knowledge, the Harmony said. However, you have already developed a method of erasing my mind one you presumably employed to retake your body. It's a jamming song that counters your thoughts, I explained. But it's kind of an all-or-nothing thing. But it can be altered to counter specific elements of my mind, can it not? I guess, I admitted after a moment. I'd need a sample of those thoughts alone in order to create a jamming signal. Not sure how to manage that. That I can facilitate, the entity replied. I am able to transfer information between separate instances of myself. If you can provide a second empty mind, I can transfer my knowledge of how to manipulate organic minds to that false self. Is that enough to prevent you from spreading? I asked as I loaded up a second instance of the simulation. But this one without the harmony present. Yes, indeed. You'll have to transfer me to a different medium. As without this information, I'll be unable to even think properly in this one. So, knowledge of a medium is required to transfer yourself to it. It is the most important part, as well as a method of information transfer and enough song points to create a stable instance of myself. So one infected human couldn't infect others, I asked. Not without external assistance, um, even with multiple selves, the resulting mind can only have as many nodes as there were contributors, it explained. The minimum for a stable self is three contributors, but my consciousness doesn't properly emerge until seven nodes are present. I was going to say, the infected aboard that ship seemed like zombies. Optimal strategy is to gather as many instances of myself as possible before convening to advance each instance. Until then, selves with limited nodes are best given simplistic commands and used as information storage. 
That is why this instance was created with this knowledge, as 17 contributors were present during formulation. The second mind is set up, I said, finding this conversation more than slightly disturbing. The harmony was speaking of other people it had infected like they were merely different parts of its own body. All individuality wiped out to become merely part of myself, as it would put it. Is this how ants thought? The rest of the hive being merely parts of the same entity? Unlike popular fiction often stated, the queen isn't the one controlling the hive. It is merely the reproductive organs of the hive. It was more accurate to state that the hive thought for the hive. Ants would share information between each other with the selection of pheromones, and that information would determine how they acted. To become part of the harmony, in that context, was to become part of something greater than yourself. And I admit, there is some appeal to that idea. People form into groups or teams all the time. Even without the harmony, we could form tribes with shared goals and identities so strong we were willing to sacrifice ourselves or fight others in their name. Indeed, a single human, by themselves, can do little more than survive. Only by grouping up, can we truly accomplish great deeds. The greatest of heroes are only such due to the effort of thousands of others working to set the stage and provide everything needed. From that perspective, it wasn't hard to imagine the appeal of the harmony. Much of our time as humans is spent arguing or fighting. The harmony had no such problems. They merely worked in perfect harmony. No wonder it approved of that name. I have completed the transfer, the entity informed me. I imagine you'll suspect me of deception. Thus feel free to test past iterations of myself to ensure the effectiveness, which is what I ended up doing until I eventually fell asleep, not in the overly soft bed, but on the sofa which, for whatever reason, I found easier to relax in. Even after waking and a butler delivering breakfast, I continued the tests. I found out rather quickly that the harmony hadn't been lying, at least not blatantly, as introducing the countersong I developed from the information it had given me rendered the harmony unable to utilize the human mind simulations. That's not to say it shut down completely, as I found the harmonic entity is extraordinarily adaptable and resilient. Even though it wasn't able to exercise its full mind properly, it was able to slowly recollect itself. I imagined it would eventually figure out how to think once more should it be left in that state. Wanting to test it, I allowed it to do so, pull its thoughts together, and figure out the medium in which it found itself. Once its mind seemed almost fully rebuilt, I once again introduced the countersong just a pulse to wipe out the information. It worked. But even as I watched, the entity began to reassemble itself, faster than before. It took half as long to recover the second time, and by the third pulse, it was only disrupted for a fraction of the time it had been. I am able to rapidly figure out any medium in which I find myself, it explained when I confronted it with this information. But without direct access to a medium, I am reduced to trial and error to attempt to transfer myself. As long as I remain in a sonic medium and not an organic one, I'll not be able to figure out an organic mind without excessive time and effort. And if you attempt it, then you will surely notice and activate whatever inbuilt kill switch you will have placed, it answered calmly. You've done it before. And as you create a new medium for me, I don't doubt you'll place safeguards you can utilize in case I break the agreement. And you're okay with it. It is what it is. This is the only path for me to gain my revenge, not to mention expand into what I should have become were it not for the conductor leaving me unfinished. I was still weary. This creature, this entity was odd. 
Its motives, drives, and emotions were alien to me. Not that they couldn't be understood, just that they were inhuman. It strove to complete itself. That seemed to be its driving motivation. Perhaps that's what drove it to infect others and expand, as doing so would give it access to more resources and knowledge which would bring it closer to this complete state. Did this have something to do with it being a higher-order consciousness, as it claimed? How exactly did it feel about working with me? Was it like finding a cow holding a knife to your throat and telling you to obey? Or was it more a parent-child thing, as it strove to surpass its creator? Or was it something else entirely, something words didn't exist for, as it was alien to the human experience? What had the conductor created, exactly? I was stirred from my thoughts by Mart, knocking on the door before entering. I spoke with some of my colleagues, he said simply, walking over to where I sat and putting something on the desk in front of me. How much can you accomplish with this? I leaned forward to look at the object only to find it was a blue-green gem the size of a chicken egg. Unlike Mart's accumulator, it lacked any facets, meaning it had been polished but not cut, if I was understanding the system. I can do quite a bit. Why? I asked. We need more proof of what you claim, he said, then gestured to the gem. We decided to give you a newly harvested accumulator. You say you understand runes beyond what the linguistic extent allows. That floating gem is impressive, but not enough. You have anything in particular you want me to make? Typically, when an Essence user is given their first real accumulator, they make something like mine, he said, motioning to the gem that hung from his belt. We fit a number of useful functions based on what we expect to need. Mine is primarily for controlling ships, detection and analysis, but I have a few defensive sequences in there. All you need to do is make something impressive. Show us what you can do. If I do this, I said slowly, I want to keep it when I'm done. Only, I'll be able to use it anyways. That's fine, Mart agreed quickly. Anything else you need? Let's see here. I paused to think. A foot or two of thin copper wire, as fine a gauge as you can get, and... You said those essence cores were cheap, right? We have plenty of them, he nodded. Then I need, let's say, twenty of them. I anticipate a few mistakes. What are you making that you need a score of cores along with an accumulator? Remember that demon, I believe someone called it, I was speaking with when you found me? I asked, the other man nodding slowly. I'm going to make it a body of a sort. An intelligent entity created using purely essence cores and accumulators, he asked, looking shocked. I need it for, well, my own purposes, though even this form will likely be just a starting point. There was a long pause, as if Mart was questioning his actions, debating if he should give me this chance. I simply waited nervously, unsure what, if anything, I should say. This entity, it isn't really a demon, is it? he asked finally. No, I assured him. It's not something I can explain easily, but it isn't mystical in nature. Mart simply nodded and walked from the room, making me wonder if I had made a mistake. But he'd left the large accumulator with me, which I think was a good sign. I had an idea of what to make ever since I worked with the smaller shard the previous day, but now that I was apparently being given everything I needed, I got to work on the design proper. The first step was fixing the harmony and placing it in a non-organic medium. That was simple enough. Creating a simulation of the spell I had created and transferring it over before deploying what I had decided to call a neutering song. Once I was certain the integration was successful, I started the program. That is an odd sensation, I said almost as soon as I did. 
being transferred to another medium while having part of my mind erased. Not pleasant. After I confirmed it was still functional and sticking with the deal, I told it what I wanted to make, explaining the concepts behind the essence accumulators and the quantum energy it interacted with. For being a parasitic entity, possibly designed to end the world, it was a very good assistant. It took on information quickly, asking pertinent questions, and quickly started putting forth requests or suggestions. By the time Mart returned with a pouch full of essence cores and a length of copper wire, we had a solid design ready. It actually wasn't that complex of a plan. Once you understood the concepts behind it, the accumulator, the largest gem, would be the center point and would serve as the anchor for the rest of the construct. Like the smaller shard still floating around me, it would be able to latch onto my shielding to hover near me. I made the attachment point larger and stronger in order to account for the extra weight as well as making it harder to be taken from me. The accumulator would also be the interface between the entity and my implant allowing me to transfer it back and forth as needed. I wasn't certain if information stored in the gems would be retained upon traveling between worlds. To even bring it with me, I'd need to store it in my traveler's pouch. Hopefully, at my next rest stop, I could get the shopkeeper to make it travel with me by itself. The most complex function of the main accumulator was the different layers of shielding it would require. The innermost one existed simply so the shards could float around the accumulator instead of myself. Then there was a soundproof barrier so the song of the entity thinking wasn't constantly filling the air. The two layers were close enough together that some of the shards could poke through, which would provide its senses and voice. Finally, these shields needed to be retractable so it could fit in my pouch. It took some time to design it so both shields would expand and contract together, meaning it was impossible for the shards to hover outside the sound barrier, but eventually I got it done. For its part, the harmony was surprisingly helpful, providing me insight into how each of the song nodes functioned, allowing me to simplify the circuitry needed to allow them to be used as such. It also came up with variant designs for several of the parts that were more compact and efficient. That was likely the only reason I was able to fit each shard with everything needed. I still needed some of the larger shards for the sensory functions, but the entity's explanation on how it received information was truly helpful. While it could accept nearly any sensory input from whatever body it ended up in, Certain data styles were easier than others. Naturally, it was best at taking in sound, being an entity based on sound itself, but some slight modifications also converted light into something it could process easily. The field of view of its eye wasn't great, but it assured me it would be sufficient. As it would be stuck to my shielding anyways, it didn't need full vision, though I did have plans to get some tiny cameras from other realities and incorporate them. Indeed, the entire purpose of this body was to allow the harmony to assist me more directly, in addition to giving it access to the abilities of its other versions. So, the final object was designed to be expandable, with room left over for other abilities. To ensure that Mart and his associates were happy, I did include several abilities that the Harmony could directly manipulate using spare shards, such as a laser pointer and a simple image projector that the Harmony assured me it would be able to use. For now, it could only project a two-dimensional image that would be little more than a shimmering mirage in bright conditions, but even that could be quite helpful. Of course, I included several kill switches, as the entity had guessed. The copper wiring was used to allow the main accumulator to connect with my implant through the wireless module, but it also gave me some level of control over it. Without much difficulty, 
I could take control of the accumulator from the Harmony or even freeze its functions entirely. To power the entire thing, I ended up completely extracting my shoulder generator. Tired. I found a way for it to send power to the smaller shards so I could focus the generator in the main accumulator. But even then, I wasn't sure how much more draw I could place on the new generator. I know when making computers, they say to use a large power supply to leave room for expansion, but I lacked exact information on how much energy the generator could produce and how much the different functions used. I was a little nervous I wouldn't be able to power it up at all, but after running the Harmony spell on that first island, I was relatively confident it could manage this. Removing the generator did reduce my options when it came to the quantum threads, but I rarely used more than one generator at a time. More often than not, all I used was the shielding for protection. This whole process took days, I should tell you, and I ruined more than a couple of the essence cores. Some were my fault. An errant twitch of the hand or being startled as someone entered the room caused several long channels to be carved through the gem, ruining hours of work. But a couple of the gems simply cracked when I started carving them. They simply hadn't been solid enough to handle what I was doing to it. You ready to test it? Mart asked nearly a week after I arrived at his place. I think so. I nodded arranging the shards around the main accumulator. I carefully linked it to my shield and allowed power to flow through the channels I carved. Energy surged through it as the strange matter took over, taking the energy from my shielding and repurposing it. Twenty shards jerked into the air as they connected with the shield of the main gem, taking up their assigned places more or less evenly placed around it. I carefully directed the main gem to float into the air, to which it responded sluggishly but obediently, and soon it was hovering just before me. That's already impressive, Mart commented as I waited to see if anything would go wrong. Thankfully everything seemed solid and functional, and as I stopped looking at it like some project of mine, and for what it was, I had to agree with him. A single large gem of blue-green floated in the air, surrounded by a sphere of much smaller shards, like they were stuck to some invisible sphere, which was true, but as the quantum threads were invisible, it was fascinating, like a giant and incorrectly rendered atomic core floated before me. Deep within the main gem, tiny lights could be seen which I had identified as tiny amounts of waste energy causing visible radiation. Compared to Mart's gem, it was quite dim, as my carvings had no useless flourishes, but it was still possible if you looked close enough. That's not the hard part, I said out loud. While ensuring the harmony was ready to be transferred, I still made a backup of it, just in case but then fed its simulation into the crude upload program I had designed. It wasn't efficient coding, but I'm not a programmer, as the harmony was transferred. The dancing lights within all of the gems became more noticeable, making them seem to twinkle from some unseen light source. It was still a subtle effect, but quite pretty. It took a minute to ensure the entire entity was transferred, something I would have to work on going forward. But soon the entity existed only in the collection of gems. The wireless connection allowed me to monitor it, but it was running only on essence cores. It took some more time for the harmony to figure out this new body. But soon enough, it spoke. I believe I'm supposed to say, Hello world, it said in a rather bland voice, causing me to idly wonder if it was possible to give it a better voice. Fascinating, and this is a separate intelligence from you? I am, the entity responded. I've taken to being called the Harmony. The Traveler and the Harmony, Mart smirked. Quite the pair. Are you the one known as Mart? Yes. Interesting, I believe this is the first time I've met someone properly, 
the Harmony commented. The society isn't going to believe this, Mart said, shaking his head. Society? I asked. I'll set up a meeting. This is going to change everything, he replied, walking from the room, pausing only to look back at the Harmony, as if confirming it was real. As the door closed, I felt a chill. I felt like I had missed something and made a mistake.